What's going on, everyone? Welcome back to another episode of The H Panel, the show where I bring on guests from all different backgrounds to talk all the things mental health. I'm your host, Harry Poffin, and today I'm joined by Claudia Gotzelman. Claudia is a midlife coach, an end-of-life doula, and a professional photographer. She uses her life experience, her training, and her stories from around the world to help those in need of answers or those in need of connection in their lives. Claudia was so fun to talk to, and this conversation got really deep, and I want to thank her again for coming on and having this discussion with me. Before you guys keep listening, please like, comment, share, subscribe, give five stars on podcast platforms, share with someone who might need to hear this episode. It's very thought-provoking, and I can't wait for you guys to listen. I hope you all have an amazing day. You absolutely all deserve it. I'll talk to you soon. Peace. I'm Harry Poppin, and this is The H Panel. And we're live. Claudia, thank you so much for joining me today. Hi, I'm excited to be here and um, see where our conversation takes us. Yeah, of course. So I wanted to ask you a little bit about yourself before we get too deep into it. So what kind of got you into this field of work? What inspired you to get into this pathway? Well, I think I always have been a very spiritual being and um, a creative, um, you know, I'm an advertising photographer have been and still am and then um so i i I think that when you're in a creative world i guess you you already sort of engage on those topics way more creative process and then i went through a burn down life event where i i like i say i i died my old self died all my old belief systems my my world my community everything burned away and um, I rebirthed myself and it was such a um, heart-wrenching but yet incredibly beautiful process which led me to um, engage on the topic of death and uh, so I I started to become an end-of-life doula and we can get into that later and then I did um, special life coach training and then I started Permission to Bloom which is um, midlife coaching practices. Awesome. So did you, when, when you say you, your old self died, was there something that made you realize that happened? Like, did, did you notice a change? I literally, I felt like I was internally actually dying because, so I, I went through a, a divorce, which was turned very, I don't know, I shouldn't say ugly, but it was, it was, it really, it was just this burning, everything fell apart. Basically, my, my life collapsed around me, my, the way my, my, my life was set up, the way I envisioned the future, my dreams, my admirations, my, my external life too, the way, the way I lived, my community, everything sort of collapsed in itself. And it was like an organism and I, I, you know, and I was collapsing. I was on a sofa for maybe more or less six months. And, um, you know, I had really dark days, but in this darkness, there was so much goodness because while I was dying more, I also realized that I can pick up certain things. I can let go of things. And the more I, allowed this process to happen the more i sort of gained myself back and i rebirthed in a way if that makes any sense yeah no totally um are you this is a side question but are are you one of those people that likes to um plan everything out in your future actually not no i actually no. i'm it's it's wow that's a good question you know so i'm i'm a creative i kind of like always i'm kind of proud of that like i'm winging it Mm. i'm always like you know somehow it will work out i trust it but then when i maybe i i was lost in this relationship maybe i bought into something or i started to believe morph into something which i'm not truly am and so that probably you know so i had 
probably the most structure I've ever had in my life in that time when I was with my ex-husband and maybe and planning I guess so but in general no mm -hmm. uh, I'm just saying that because I, I when I was going through breakups like I I'm a guy who well I'm getting better at it but I like to plan everything in advance like my whole life is planned what well, I don't like consciously do it but I do subconsciously like my whole life plan is planned out and if one thing goes like away from that pathway I start to panic and my whole world feels like it's crumbling down so I like noticed a couple resemblances there and I was just wondering if that's how you view life because that's how I do it and it's just it's so exhausting wow hmm no it is I love the question and the the, the you know the contemplation mm, no I think it was deeper because it was it was just you know the external and the internal are very much connected to one another so there was this structure which i i guess because we were a couple we believed that this is the way we're going and then it just sort of fell away and it was my belief system actually which really collapsed mm -hmm. your uh, like your values or yeah you know the community the people i thought they're my friends the outlook my own maybe self-worth my definition of what i told myself the construct of myself who i am mm -hmm. um you know we get all stuck in life sometimes right? we go down that road and then we take on this identity and we we don't often think that this happens and even in relationships I'm like no I got myself I'm me he's he she's her but then it slowly creeps in and then we sort of get further you know derailed from our true self and I think that's sort of what happened mm -hmm. yeah you, you guys became one person as opposed to two individuals maybe <laughs> yeah um well so okay i f i believe if you have when you're in a conscious relationship or if you're in a long-term relationship you know life is just so complicated right we become so many rocks are going to be thrown to to us and and hiccups and whatnot but if you're a unit if you're a couple and these things happen you could actually together grow together if you're on the same wavelengths and it takes work then you will um, have the communication and be like okay we got this and we we could re um restructure of who we are but if one person stays behind and doesn't want to grow with you it takes two people to dance right it, if one person doesn't want to be there you can't do it by yourself you almost then so in my case i was forced to go downhill with him because <laughs> you you know he was like no i'm out i even i don't have any interest in looking at this and restructuring and i was exactly the opposite i was like wow this is amazing now we get to actually re just re look at the relationship and re redo it all over and give ourselves a new identity and so i think maybe that fact that he wasn't going to be there with me to look at this and tackle this and and go with me to rearrange everything I think maybe that that led to that complete burn down mm -hmm. and then and then when that complete burn down happened and you started um you said you started realizing that you know you, you can let things go mm -hmm. and you can tear off like um because in the moment you're like stuck in the moment and you feel like everything's falling apart and then you recognize that you were able to let things go. Was there anything that prompted that recognition? It's it was a process. Yeah, I think maybe the first one, you know, you I mean, probably some of your listeners or you yourself, you know, when we're in this deep hole and we're in that darkness. We just sit in there and the more we struggle, the more we fight it, the more actually it gains power, right? The more it is like anxiety, the more we fight the anxiety, the more the anxiety will be fueled. 
and it will come out stronger. And I think the first thing was that I accepted it. I was like, okay, there's just going to be another shitty day and I'm not going to do anything. <laughs> it was heavy. And so, but by realizing, by me accepting it, it took the, the breath away. And slowly I was like, okay, it's all right. I gave basically myself permission to be miserable. I was, you know, I was just like, okay, that's it. I just, I even told people, I was like, it's another shitty day. Mm -hmm. and, but that was, I think that was one of the key moments where I was like, wow, the moment I really just allow it and I breathe into the misery of myself and I accept the darkness, whatever came up, it almost was like, woof, it was poofing away and I wasn't feeling as bad anymore. Mm hmm. Yeah, that it was a really interesting process. Yeah, yeah, that that acceptance is so hard to get mm -hmm. to. Because uh, like a lot of us, um, we don't want to accept it. Like we don't want to accept the fact that we're gonna have a shitty day because I think all our expect all our expectations are like, we have to be happy all the time. And we have to mm -hmm. be successful all the time. Um, when in reality, like you're gonna have ups and downs. And the sooner you accept that, like, the, the happier you'll be in the happy moments anyway. Yeah. And it's obviously it depends on the level, right? Mm -hmm. Of where whatever we're going through and the little things are maybe easier to tackle, but then also maybe not. It depends, you know, sometimes the little things are the, the real nuggets. <laughs> well, yeah. So, well, well, <laughs> well, sometimes the little things you're like, oh, I don't even need to pay attention to it. Yeah. And then they sneak up on you and they get you. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Mm. So do you, do you meditate mm -hmm. and did that meditation help at all with, uh, letting these things poof out? Yeah, it was just a, a, a combination of a lot of things. I journaled a lot and I, you know, this is one of the things I always say people should journal. If I look back at my, my books, I wrote, I, I wrote so much. I can't even read some of it because it was, it's incredible because it's a, a somatic yes, a experience because you write, right? You, you really, you have to trust and you never stop. Like you really have to let the emotion go through you. And because so the writing is a somatic, it's somatic. So you write it out, it, whatever comes through, you go through your hand, through you, through your pen under the paper. And I think it's a form of letting go. Mm hmm. Yeah, you, you feel it almost. Yeah. Yeah, I um, w whenever I'm stuck in my head, um, like I've tried journaling, but I'm more into typing because I just grew up with it. Mm -hmm. Um, But I'll type it out or I'll text a friend or I'll call a friend or something. And when it gets out, I'm like, what a ridiculous thought that's yeah. that I'm wasting my energy on. Yeah, it's fascinating. I think because we don't have to hold on to it anymore. And then it creates that space, a new space in us for something else to be occupied, right? Mm -hmm. And it, and anger, I, but I, I don't know. Yeah, you, I don't know how you type. Maybe you type very, very energetically. Just like. <laughs> <Angry>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I know I type a lot too. And, um, but then for that, the writing, the handwriting really had to do it. It was, and I, I was, yep, yeah, I was just writing and writing and writing and even drawing you know whatever it came whatever it was and it's it's sacred it's it was it still is like i i think it's a beautiful practice i so recommend it mm -hmm. i love looking at um because i have i'm following a couple people on instagram that uh express their uh feelings through art i just i find mm -hmm. it so interesting what the brain comes up with because it's all yeah. so different. Yeah. We, we forget that, like, because humans are pretty similar, but at the same time, everyone's brain is different, which I just, it, it's hard for me to wrap my head around because there's like almost 8 billion of us. It's like, how can there be 8 billion different configurations of the same muscle? It's just, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, we all have different histories, different influences. It's, you know, so yeah, it makes us unique mm -hmm. different reactions different digestions yeah yeah different intakes you know everything mm -hmm. it's crazy yeah. so 
how how does one this is kind of a big question i'm trying to think if i can get it down to a smaller question but i don't know if i can so i'm just gonna say it how how does one achieve happiness within themselves Whoa. like where where do we <laughs> like yeah i know like where, where do we start ah oh, where do we start i think we start by maybe taking the pressure away from that word happiness mm. I think there's so much so much expectation on that word happy what does that really mean we're happy what is you know because again it's like you say eight billion people but it means probably to all eight billion or all, how many we are now as something else because we define it differently and when you think about happiness it's probably different than what i think about happiness so would shouldn't we maybe rather say content Mm, I like that inner, inner peace, mm -hmm. inner calm, because isn't that what sort of steers that that what we call happiness, but I don't know happiness is such a I think it's a loaded word very yeah yeah and then you ask me how can we go there or how can we achieve that maybe by first of all acknowledging that we're not and that we're numb. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, first we have to really, we have to realize what state we're in. Because, yeah, how do you, you cannot get from, let's say you have a nine to five job and you really just you're not you know you have everything on the outside but the inside tells you you're unsatisfied and there's this nagging feeling and then you add that pressure of oh i'm supposed to be happy so you're chasing something but you don't even know what you're chasing mm -hmm. so, yeah. so first of all you need to learn of what that nagging feeling is and you need to learn of who you truly are and what what it is, what would make you actually so-called apprentices happy. So that's where the work I think starts. Mm -hmm. A lot of us live like a hamster on a wheel. Right. Because I, I think, I think another reason for that is, and this is another heavy word. I think a lot of people focus on, <clears throat> excuse me, being on being like successful, like, their idea of success isn't what they believe in. It's what they they're told success is. And I think they're just trying to go for that. And I'm like, sometimes I do it too. I aim for it. And it just it doesn't make me happy. Because we're not paying attention to what we actually think is success. We're paying attention to what we're, we were told growing up, what success is. Mm -hmm. Because so much. Yeah, because we're told like, you know, money's gonna make you happy this job is going to make you happy. So you, you got success and happiness shaking hands together in your brain. And then it results in you just in a constant loop trying to achieve something you're never going to get. Yeah, it's like the carrot on the wheel, right? Where, or the, the carrot in front of the rabbit. Mm -hmm. It's tangling there. And then because yeah, it's it's fascinating the way our life is set up, you know, through so social media and politics and the systems which we are part of and live in that we and you know even the school system right you you maybe you're happy when you're four years old or three years old and you just run around in the garden and you have no agenda and you're just chasing you know whatever a butterfly or just you're just free and then it's all sort of taken away slowly and you you put in that classroom and then the you're you're like now you have to learn so you can be successful and happy mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and like some people love the classroom and like for them it's great mm -hmm. but my my issue with the classroom and i'm like over you know generalizing here but when i was in school i found it was more of a i have to pass as opposed to i want to learn mm -hmm. because the things i was learning i didn't I, frankly i didn't give a crap about I just I, like they they were of no importance or interest to me, but I had to take it to pass. So it was more of like my brain was in survival mode as opposed to 
I do want to learn this. And then that in turn is like adding to that pressure of you need to do this to be successful and you need to be successful to be happy. It's just you add to that fire. Yeah, totally. It's this identity you you're forced to take on and there's almost no space or freedom for you to, to be your true self. And yeah, I, 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 I love this conversation because I think it should, we should all have it. We should all question this. Maybe the school system needs a reformation as well. Maybe we need to, you know, teach other things. Algebra, fine. <laughs> how about making a fire and um, knowing how to survive and live sustainably? I mean, wouldn't, or how to be with others, you know, mindfulness and things like this wouldn't have, that would make, I think, a better world where we are coming back around in community instead of being, coming these egocentric beings mm -hmm. all just counting and wanting things for ourselves and you know i don't want to sound judgmental or or negative or dark but i i'm a person i've questioned always everything and i think it's so healthy to question and right now in these times i think it's really served up again that we really truly should question And, you know, internally, externally, because the systems we just accept and we grow up with them. So we never question these systems, but we, we should question these systems because there's other ways of living. Mm -hmm. Simpler, better ways, right? I, I, I do agree that we should put more emphasis on community. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at all the areas that do, like people live longer, people live happier. It's just there's studies endlessly about it. Um. And then here, like, I'm sure it's the same in Europe. Here in the Western world, we're, it's like a dog-eat-dog -dog world, man. You're just trying to climb that ladder, and you don't care who you knock down on the way up. Mm -hmm. we're, we're so divided. And, like, I don't like saying positives about the pandemic because things, you know, we, we all know the circus act that was 2020. But one positive was that, like you said, we started to question things. And we started realizing, mm -hmm. like, we need community way more than some other things in our lives. And then we started questioning the system. And I think that is a positive. I, I do think that when we get out of this mess, things will go back to normal, but not like as normal as before. I think a lot of people are starting to realize what makes them happy. They've had all this time to themselves. And I think that's a good thing because we do need like school and we need those jobs and we need people in that system, of course. Um, But I think a lot of people who were in that system weren't happy. And I think they're starting mm -hmm. to realize that. Yeah, I hope I hope that it sticks. I'm fascinated about it, how it all came about. And yes, you know, whatever people think, there's like, you know, all the conspiracy theories or not. But at the end of the day, we're forced to go inward. And because there's less distraction. Before we had, you know, we're masters of distraction. We can just, you know, if we don't want it, we, 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 I think it's, it, I don't know about you, but before it all happened, 19, 18, we already knew that we cannot live on like this anymore. Something has to give, something has to change. It has, we, we didn't live sustainably. We didn't respect mother earth, this planet. Right. And so now. It's just, it happened and we have to go inward. We have to address this, this, this nuts in our being, which probably sit, has been sitting there for years because we're on this hamster wheel and we know we're not happy and we're not getting anywhere. But now suddenly it's, it's like, whoa, okay, let's look, let's analyze. And then all falls away, the distraction, And then what really is essential, as you said, community and meaningful relationships. Mm -hmm. I think that's what we need. And you coming, it's coming, let's come back to that happiness. It's so simple in a way, right? If we have community and meaningful relationships and connections, I think we can find that happiness there. Mm -hmm. well, well, biologically, we're just, we're like a, we're a group animal at the core mm -hmm. level, whether you want to believe in evolution or not. Uh, if you do, like, you know, the great apes, if you look at them, they're all together in a troop. They're all, you know, communicating, touching, working together. Like, 
at the core level, that's what we are. And the system has kind of made us, I, I sound like such a conspiracy theorist, the system, <laughs> but like the, like it's true. Like they've made it so that th none of that matters. Just go out, get your money, forget everybody else, cut them all off. And then you'll be happy. But then you get there and you're like, wait, I'm not happy though. Because then you realize you cut everything that m makes you truly happy off. Yeah. I think when we give, when we are allowed to help, I think we find so much peace and content. That's also so innate to our being as a human. And, you know, just altruistic, altruistically, like we like to give and help. Mm hmm. Um, you know, you hear so many beautiful stories now. I mean, it's again, there's this silver lining to to this paradigm shift. I think it's a paradigm shift we're in, um, you know, where, where people really find community in the most unusual moments and places. You know, so many people have said, I've never talked to my neighbor. I've lived five years next in, next to them. <laughs> they didn't even know how they looked like. And now they share a meal in the hallway or something or in the backyard. And they realize that they're really cool people. Mm -hmm. And suddenly they found they found their own community, right? So it's awesome. Yeah. It's so, it's, it's so needed. Mm -hmm. That's the one positive, I think, about uh, social media is like it's a huge community but there's all these niches you can fall into like there's so many negatives to social media and i rant about it forever i sound like an old man but like the one positive is like there it, it is a community and right now like it, for some people it's the only community you have yeah i don't know about you how how much um lockdown you you have where you are but I mean, I'm in Germany and we have been on a really strict lockdown since the middle of November again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, it's the second version. And um, I mean, I am so grateful for the technology you know, like we here, we are here right now, you and I, I feel like I'm in your, in your, in your living room, you know, we're so close to, we have this conversation, we sit across the table, right? So that's pretty incredible that we can do that. And that for me, that enriches me so much because I'm yearning, you know, my friends or, um, I, th that exchange on a deeper level, but so I'm blessed that we have technology that we can still do that. Mm hmm yeah, hundred percent. It's a way to just, yeah. like you said, stay connected. Yeah. So, um, all my questions are so large, but do you? Actually, I'm going to ask this first. So, you said you you took courses um, to be an end of life doula. Mm -hmm. What is that? end of life doula so there's doulas which help help um, babies to be born mm -hmm. that's you know birthing doula and now there is a profession it's called end of life doula and you help the person at the end of the life to go from form to formless and it's a very beautiful um, profession it's similar you help to bring somebody to this world or you help to transit but so they would let's say somebody would want to hire me you can do this six months nine months a year before maybe you know you have at you or you the relative of the person who is passing and then we would make a plan and talk about all the things which needs to be discussed around death that's like from where would you want to be how would you want your death to look like you know like would you want to be in a room with lots of sunlight um, would you want to have a scent of party? Um, how would you burl? How should that be? What ceremony? Do you have any last wishes, dreams? Would you, when you, if you maybe are able to go and do a trip, maybe you need to mend some relationships. What's your legacy? Do you want to put on together a music, a playlist of your favorite music, um, a photo album? To leave behind 
I mean, it's endless. It seems kind of heavy. I don't know. I think it is heavy because we are so scared of death. I was just going to ask, so why do we fear death so much? Because we're disconnected from it. Again, I feel, I feel, you know, when you go back, back in time, or even you go to tribes in wherever they still are, they have a completely different relationship to death, right? It's a, and in Asia, it's probably also still because of Buddhism and Zen religion, um, you know, there's a celebration, there's an honoring of that person and the life and uh, and or in Indian Hinduism, there's understood that it's not the end. It's just a going from this body to and to another form and being rebirthed right in the in another form. But for us in the Western world, it become it became so dark, heavy and lonely. And then if you go like also in our history back it used to be a communal thing. It used to be a family thing. The family, the tribe would gather and would celebrate and come together and share stories about that person or memories, which were, you know, all shared They were, you know, whatever they, they could, uh, you know, wanted to, to bring forward into the circle. And then through that, it formed a new way of community and being together and, um, and intimacy actually because of that shared moment because it's a, it's sacred right it's a sacred moment just as somebody's born and somebody goes it's it's just that it's it's the most normal thing in life actually and we we, we alienated it mm -hmm. it, it yeah it just seems like there's this dark blanket over the word death mm -hmm. but it doesn't need to be i feel it's it's one of those you know we're, we're, we have so evolved we have tackled so many topics in our so-called modern world but there is still this is a forbidden conversation and people shy away and don't want to have it and because of that it becomes bigger and bigger and then and everybody shrieks when you say "Ooh, death mm. how could you how, how can you engage on this how why would you want to work with you know on with people but um, I find it so t beautiful when you can help somebody to find out how, what their last wish is and, and give them this wish. And then they can be in peace with that, that this is how they're going to pass and transition instead of being in a hospital with neon lights and pee pee machines. And then the relatives come and everybody freaks out and nobody knows anything. And then it's so stressful. And that's the memory then we carry forward, let's say, as a family. You know, the relatives come, nobody knows. And then that's the last, the last memory we have of that person. I think that's way more sad. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe that's why we have this, 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 this shrieking reaction when we think of death maybe that's why we because we think of the hospital rooms or that loneliness and the neon lights yeah that makes a lot of sense mm -hmm. it, it seems strange that we fear the one thing we can't control no and you know what we are dying so many times throughout our life right mm. I, already and that's another thing so if we can acknowledge the little deaths we have, some are bigger, some are smaller, in our life, as in our journey, our life's journey, and we engage on that, and we we be with it, and we we digest it, and we grieve it, and then let it go, then we are also prepared for the big one. Mm -hmm. So how how do we stop? being scared of it like how do we just ex like i don't want to say roll over and accept it but how do we just like accept the fact that it's coming well maybe through conversations like this just to take the, the darkness away and um, reframe and look at it through a different lens of 
beauty and intimacy and sacredness. And you know, also, when we talk about death, we also need to talk about life. Mm -hmm. and we need to talk about love. And that's also forgotten. Because if you think about so if somebody really loved a, a lived a conscious life, like really engaging all this, so that person will also have a beautiful death. Mm -hmm. And vice versa, if, if, you know, usually, I mean, this, it's, it's sound maybe harsh, but if you die by yourself under neon lights, and you never thought about this, never shared your, your, your wishes and thoughts forward with your beloved or your family. What does that really actually say the way you lived about the relationships you have? Mm -hmm. Whereas the, you know, because it's, it's about, it's really is about intimacy to share these. It's, it probably, it feels vulnerable, right? Even to, to talk about it. But let's say, but, and nothing is guaranteed. So we don't even have to think of like old, old people in, you know, with whatever heavy sicknesses. We don't know what's happening tomorrow. You don't know what's going to happen to you tomorrow. How would that feel? Let's say somebody, if I ask you right now, if you would, you know, let's say you, you have two more days, how would you feel about your life? Me personally? Yeah. I'm going to ask you. Uh, um, <laughs> I mean, I'd kind of be like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. I give you three months. How about that? Three months? Oh. I give you three months. I give you three months. You got three months. You just got the news. We're just going to have this hypothetical mm -hmm. um, sickness happen to you. You just found out and you have three months to live. How would you feel? Reflecting back on your life, what could you say? I mean, I, I'm I'm personally pretty fortunate to have. Uh, I've got a really good support circle. I've got mm -hmm. a great family. I've got great friends. Um, I don't know. I just feel like I haven't. I don't feel ready. I think mm -hmm. that that that's what a lot of people struggle with. Like, um they like they can accept the fact that yeah tomorrow's not promised but they have but they think like i have so much to do tomorrow though mm -hmm. i have so much to do like i have so much left to do i see i love that and that's exactly the in where we go in because then you realize and everybody and maybe people who listen your listeners also could just stay close your eyes and think about it you have three months to live how does that sit and then, you know, what, what kind of emotion comes up? And then you, as you said, you realize, oh my God, I have, I have so much to do. I have so much to experience. I haven't done all these things. So maybe, but that ignites that life, that fire. And we're like, so what are you waiting for? Mm. <laughs> and I'm not saying throw out everything, all your structures and run away and live, you know, be, you know, go to a deserted island or not or whatever, right? I'm not saying that, but I'm saying, this is the fire which ignites back our life force our like how alive are we really wanting to be and maybe that brings you to get off that hamster wheel and maybe that makes you like oh, i have this dream i always wanted to open a bakery mm -hmm. because i'm an amazing baker but you know i have this nine to five accountant job and i hate it but one day when I'm retiring one day in the future, which we don't know that the future will never maybe ever happen, right? Because as we just learned, you got three months, suddenly something happened. It's life, right? Unpredictable. But so why wait? And this is the thing we're waiting. And what are we waiting for? Why are we like living in the future? We don't, there is no future. There's just the here and now. And then we really, internalize that then i think we will be able to live a more fulfilled life mm -hmm. it goes back to the whole uh planning thing <laughs> okay that's i love that so it's that you're a good subject because you like to plan perfect yeah <laughs> <laughs> great <laughs> yeah so what are you planning 
I mean, you're planning, but I mean, the planning, that's awesome that you have this. And I, I again, I'm, I'm not saying I'm not saying you need to stop planning and be extreme. But if we plan too much, are we, st are we actually doing the things we really want to do? Or are you planning them and we're like, well, in five years, I'm going to do this. Mm. But what if this five year never happens? So are you truly aligned right now in this moment where we're talking? Are you you know feeling like you're true to yourself to your authentic self and you doing the things you really know you should be doing uh, know or want 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 Dreams. when i'm doing stuff like this yeah yeah i think i think I this is the first time in my life and i mean first time like even before the pandemic let's say mm -hmm. like beginning of 2020 like january was kind of when i i guess you know uh died and came back in some sense like mm -hmm. the old me kind of was like ah this is enough enough of that um yeah i don't know because I, I i recognize in myself that when i'm doing stuff like this i really i genuinely love doing this stuff mm -hmm. but then in my head i start to panic because i go well, in five years, will you be able to keep doing it? It's like, shut up. Like, I don't, I don't care if it makes me happy now. Why, why should I worry about five years from now? Maybe I'm not here, you know? Right. So I think that's to me, is it, it's exhausting, but I think it's an exhausting, uh, symbolization that I'm in the right spot. If that makes mm -hmm. any sense. Well, okay. So Yes, you're checking in consciousness and awareness is the first step, right? To, 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 to implement change or to live more, um, consciously. But then, so how are you, how are you with this fear? Does that stop you or does that give you energy? The fear of, uh, like oh. where I'm going to be. Mm -hmm. When you say it gives you this fear that uh, well, you, like you love love having this conversation or the, the podcast, but then you're like, wow, can I, you know, is this sustainable for the future? Can I do this in five years or how am I, am I wasting time? So then the old construct comes back, right? Mm -hmm. That you need to do something else, maybe what society, so to say, in, you know, the structure tells you to do to, to get a different job mm -hmm. yeah i'm, I'm kind of asking oh yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. so it's an unlearning so it's really like a trusting you have to just trust that everything whatever unfolds will be the right thing and but if you're already loving right now so much what you're doing then you're you're changing your vibration right because you're you're radiating, radiating out this beautiful energy because you're really aligned right now with you because it gives you so much you're getting it's like spiritual mental food mm -hmm. you're you're getting right from this you 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 this this podcast the exchange with the people you have the conversations so then you're trusting you you have to just really lean into the trust that whatever this nowness Open, will open more new other doors and you're on your path that you basically found that path and maybe in five years it might not be the podcast but something else may have come up from that come sprung from that a whole nother uh, door might have opened you cannot even conceive right now where that could take you but because of what you're learning right now through this podcast you know there's so much wisdom right you we, we always get we gain from exchange with others who knows mm -hmm. i hope people are listening and resonating with this and it's not just <laughs> them seeing me get psychoanalyzed <laughs> well but isn't that what it is i think we lost so much trust in our own abilities in our gut in our intuition because that's the problem we feel we feel it we have that nut in our stomach we don't have the language we don't have the tools we know we're not aligned we're under on, on the hamster wheel on we go we're unhappy 
we, 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 we're frustrated, you know, we get sick because it's somatic, whatever psychologically finds a way into our body. But the moment we know we're aligned, we, 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 we feel it, you, you know it. It's like the sing in, inside, it's something, yeah, start singing, in, you're, you're glowing. Everything is just like, wow. And it, you don't even know really what it is, but it makes you feel good. And you, you almost have springs in your feet. And, and that, that's what we have to trust. Because mm -hmm. there's nothing else anyway. That's true. So let's say um, you are stuck on the hamster wheel mm. and the job that you have, you hate, like you hate that job. Um, this is not me, by the way, I'm just hypothetically <laughs> speaking. <laughs> um, okay, I'm glad. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah, yeah, just, yeah. So let's say you're on the hamster wheel, you hate your job, but that is your only way of m making a life that's your only way of providing the best life for your family. Mm. Like it, it's the best paying job you can get and your family's living comfortable on it, but you hate it so much. And like your passion is, let's say something that isn't as monetized, like, I don't know, painting. Mm. So if you're in that scenario, how does that person get off the hamster wheel and still have the ability to provide? Because I think that's another worry for people is like, mm -hmm. I have this passion, but uh, I won't get paid enough for it. So I'd rather just be comfortable. Mm. Well, okay, then can we dissect comfortable? What does that, you know, what does that mean? Because we, I think we, we have so much and yet, and we think we have nothing, but do we need, really need all the things we think we need because there's a lot we also it's pushed onto us by again by marketing and social media and so on and then we buy this and we buy that and we need another new phone and I'm, I'm not excluding myself you know we live in the system and it's 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 interesting it's you know we never really can completely step away but I mean I don't know for for myself I'm an artist and I've, I realized that I don't really actually need that much mm -hmm. because yeah, we all not like nice clothes, but maybe we can go and shop in a secondhand store or if we have a clothing swap. I mean, there's so much clothes everywhere, right? Do we really need to buy some new clothes? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? There's a different way of living and I, I, I you not, know, of course, every situation is different and I have no right to, 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 to judge or say anything because maybe it is hard if you have a family and you're the sole provider and you have children and you hate your job and then you really feel stuck. But then maybe is it a conversation you could have with your partner? Is there something you can think outside the box and be creative and sort of make at least a plan, a goal, like slowly find a way um, doing this job you hate, but carving out some time and furthering this, this dream, making a step towards this dream. So it sort of becomes somewhat reality. At least then we feel productive and, um, you know, going towards something. There's a goal. Mm hmm. Like make it kind of a side hustle almost. Mm hmm. And also, is it, it is it really if it's that important? I think if it if it really is that there will be a, a turning point that we you know, it's either make or break. You, if you hate your job that much and you're going to be so miserable, maybe you bring your home and you're miserable to your family. And then may, what what is that could entail? You're unhappy. Maybe you start an affair. You start drinking. You, you numb more you numb yourself in further you maybe start a addiction who knows what right it just slippery slope down for, down into the darkness because you're so unhappy or could it be wow the realization I hate my job what can I do okay I need to make change how can I make change 
then we shouldn't overwhelm ourselves. Let's just start small. What can I do to, what makes me, you know, finding out what fulfills me and how could I, you know, carve out the time that I, that it balances the misery at least a little bit that I feel like when I go back to work, I still have this quality time with myself, which gives me, fills me up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's got to be a little break from the hamster wheel every now and then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we get we get so well it, well, it goes back to the hamster wheel, you get so sucked up on it. And then you just you don't realize that you're eating your brain away almost. Mm -hmm. You're making it so numb that it's just eating away at itself. Yeah. And we're masters of numbing. We're, we're master numbers. Mm -hmm. Master number. Yeah, That's a job. <laughs> we are. Think about it. I mean, you know, you, you, I mean, there's so many addictions, so many, many addictions. And, and just so we don't have to be with ourselves and feel the void. So we keep busy. Yeah. I also feel like in our, uh, civilization we've kind of forgotten the well we've forgotten how lucky we are like you go to places and i, I don't know i'm not even going to say which country because i'm probably going to get it wrong but like you go to these communities who like live in the forest or they like they they live off hunting they get their water from the river or a well like deep in the forest they have huts, like mm -hmm. no actual bathrooms. Like you, people in our world forget how lucky it is to just use a toilet mm -hmm. or to be able to go to the fridge and put your glass in the fridge and get the water. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another reason why we always get on that hamster wheel and always get so unhappy is because we're reaching for things that aren't necessities. We've got like the dollar bill signs in our eyes Mm -hmm. when in reality everything like we, we have it so easy here and i i, mm -hmm. I say that as a generalization because i know there's a lot of people who have really unfortunate situations and I, i'm i'm i consider myself incredibly lucky because i was never like i had you know ups and downs but in terms of like living situations i was never in a situation like that so i'm, I'm incredibly fortunate but i'm talking about people in situations like mine because they, you forget you forget how lucky it is to be able to eat dinner every night, mm -hmm. but then you're, you're chasing this dream and then you, you become unhappy and you think the things that you've got are just crap. You're like, this isn't what I want. I want something more. And it's like, well, just settle down for a second and mm -hmm. enjoy the fact that you've got that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just thinking there's seven needs, right? We, we, I think as humans, seven basic needs that we want them to fulfill. And if they're not fulfilled, we, we probably struggle. So no, it's actually nine. Sorry, I got it wrong. So it's security. We want to feel secure. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it's a question of how we interpret it, but secure as in maybe even secure in our surrounding by who uh, by people we are surrounded we want we just want to feel we're, we're in a secure environment yeah it's, it's feeding that like fight or flight yeah. need like yeah. calming that down yeah yeah adventure we all want some sort of adventure it's it's in that it's in us in our genes mm -hmm. freedom we want to feel free we all want somehow to, yeah, whatever, again, we all interpret it differently, like the old, the 8 billion, <laughs> it's different interpretation, but there's still this urge. It's, 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 it's primal, right? Mm -hmm. Freedom. Expression. We want to, we all have a form of expression, whatever, verbally, dance. Yeah, you know, again, whatever, however you can think of it. 
And then there's power. I think we all seek somehow. It's an, it's we know that through research that we all have that in us genetically. This urge of having some form of power. Mm -hmm. Exchange, like we an, an um, um, in the interpersonal exchange. We exchange our thoughts, our emotions. Um, acceptance. We all want to be seen, heard, accepted for who we are. I think that's a very important one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And communion. C community, like, you said? Is the last communion, one? Com communion. Communion. Okay. Communion, like being with somebody. Mm, I see. Call it communion. Yeah. Oops. <sighs> I think, I think we often focus on power mm -hmm. and acceptance too much. I think, I think we worry too much about what other people think. Mm -hmm. Expression. Yeah. Expression, right? That's, I think we, for, we forgot also about the expression. Mm -hmm. the exp we need to express ourselves more. We, we just be free, dress whatever you want, have whatever haircut you like, like freedom of like be, express yourself that way. But the thing again, it's like society often puts us in these boxes. You can't do this, then you're judged. Then there's these labels, right? When you wear, maybe let's say you have dreadlocks, you're instantly judged that you would be Mm hmm. Yeah, yeah, you're, you're, mm. you're worried about being judged for that. I think that also mm -hmm. links to your acceptance point. Mm -hmm. Is that's why we don't express ourselves. Because if we do what we want to do. And like, let's say I want a pink ponytail. I don't know. Uh, I don't but I'm just saying if I did. And then like, I'd be worried to wear that because people would judge me and people wouldn't accept me. That's a total hypothetical, but I, I just mean, that's why a lot of us don't express ourselves the way we, we would want to. Well, but that's, it's interesting. So, because maybe if you would have, if you would stand in your power and say, no, I'm going to express myself and I'm going to have this pink ponytail, maybe people would be judged, but then because of who you truly are, you woe them over and they have to realize that they just had this judgment. They put a story, they put a label on you, which is completely fails. So maybe we can, maybe this is the way in to start from the ground up, right? So again, it comes back to realizing who we are and, and, and really empowering ourselves and be like, no, if we, so if you wear that pink ponytail and you go outside and you feel you feel intimidated mm -hmm. by the fact that you and you're already walking into the coffee shop and you are like oh my god everybody's gonna look at me and you already your body language is be like Ooh, you know i don't want to be here i just want a coffee <laughs> you know, it's a great idea to have a pink ponytail when you were at home i'd, I'd look great in a pink ponytail by yeah, the way I've, to all the yeah, viewers you would <laughs> Maybe you should consider it. No. <laughs> um, <laughs> hey, it's a good test. And then, so, but if you really embody that that pink pink ponytail, and you walk into the coffee shop, and you're you just act like nothing is wrong, nothing abnormal, nothing. It's just most. You just have a pink ponytail, and maybe people, two people, maybe give you the looks, and then they see you again, and nobody says anything because they're like, well. It's Harry with the pink ponytail. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're confident. You know, and so, and then it's the confidence, right? You own it. And so maybe then you, you change the status quo from the ground up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So just maybe own it. That's the way to, 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 to change society. You just got to own it. Got to own it. Yeah. It's, I hope we get there. I mean, the, the problem is there's still 
like half the population that's so judgmental. And I think it, I think a lot of it to like put myself in their shoes. I think a lot of it is just lack of understanding because you, you see that with like, like different, um, like sexual orientations, different Mm -hmm. like preferences, like a lot of people, a lot of straight people just don't get it. And I think they're almost because they don't understand it. They're intimidated by, I'm not talking about myself. I just mean like they just don't understand it. So they're intimidated by it in a sense almost, or not Mm -hmm. even intimidated. They're just confused because it's not them. And I think that's where a lot of judgment sprouts from is this lack of understanding. It's not knowing, right? It's something foreign. Mm -hmm. The moment you don't know, then we put stories together. So then we become intimidated because it's foreign. We don't have the knowledge. So we better stay in our own box and rather us and believe the story we're formulating. So it come, then it comes the next thing is curiosity. We just, and this may be another very, very important thing. I think we're lost. We have lost our sense of curiosity. Mm-hmm. If we're curious, then there is no, then we don't have to feel intimidated. If we're curious, then we're open to learn new things. And then there's acceptance because we gain, we gain something. It's curiosity we gain. It's a positive thing. Yeah. There's too many, there's too many close-minded people. Like I, I've been told that I'm very open-minded, which kind of like, I like to think I am, but I didn't, I don't like that. It's such a, an odd thing. I don't, I don't like that. It's so different to be accepting and to want to learn that just makes no sense to me like Mm -hmm. people will be like oh you're so open-minded for going to these parades and going to you know and like asking questions and talking to these people i'm like yeah like why wouldn't you though like what why is why is our world so closed-minded now Hmm. because that's part of the hamster wheels fine print Hmm. small print yeah right it's just you wear the what's the word in english when the horse wears the um visors left and right the, like oh uh, and the cartridges yeah tunnel vision almost yeah you know they they have these horses sometimes they have these things when they have a cartridge they like so they don't get blinded mm-hmm. but it's it's just so you don't look left you don't look right you just yeah tunnel vision i guess the word you're talking Mm -hmm. about like the the race horses right Mm -hmm. yeah right but i mean so how do we get out of this so it comes back to me for me it comes back to education maybe you know since we talked about the school system maybe it should be obligatory that everybody needs to do a trip to a foreign country and be immersed into into that culture for a week Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we expose ourselves to that. And curiosity is something very childlike. Why do we why do we let go of our our playful curiosity when we grow up? Because you can't use it. You can't use it on the hamster wheel. <laughs> it weighs you down. Right. You look you look left and right and you're like, whoa, there's a million other hamster wheels. I'm never going to get off. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Everyone's on a hamster wheel. You're like, oh, I'm not the only one. Ah, oh, shoot. Must be the right thing. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Hmm. I do agree that um, they should teach more of these things in schools. Because I know, well, I was I was very fortunate where my school was very multi multicultural and very people weren't afraid to express themselves for the most part. Um, people were fairly open about who they were. Mm -hmm. And I think that in turn enabled me to have that open mind. Not that I didn't have it like before, but like growing up, I was always um, exposed to these things. And I think that helps. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, because there's a lot of schools where maybe there isn't multiple different cultures in the school. Maybe it's like, Mm -hmm. you know, all super white and super 
I don't know, all from the same neighborhood, grew up all together. And then you go into the real world and then you, you have this closed, closed mind and you're mm-hmm. confused as to what all these other things are. So I do agree that school should be teaching more about what's out there. Because then you, you raise kids with a more open mind who go out into the world and they go, oh, I've heard of this before. Mm-hmm. Or, oh, I've seen this culture before. I've learned about this culture. And you don't have to know, like, you don't have to know everything about it, but just in mm-hmm. idea, you just have to know the basics. Like, yes, I can recognize that that group of people is here mm-hmm. and they're doing their thing and it's great as opposed to going out in the real world and getting the shock. Yeah, and also, doesn't that make it much more interesting, our diversity? Oh, I love it. Uh, yeah, if we would all be the same and we would be all looking the same, we'd all eat the same thing, dress the same, then we'd be like, well, the ultimate hamster wheel. <laughs> mm, that'd be awful. Yeah, be, so it's, it's, you know, that's the thing. It's become, it's... Like, oh, you're different. But then it should rather be like, whoa, you're different. Mm. It should be, you know, exciting. I'm like, wow, you're different. I can learn something from you. You know, what, what, what is it? How are you, how are you different? Is there should be some excitement and not be like, oh my God, you're different. And that's sort of part of, I think, where we are right now. Yeah. I, I think we give a lot of power to the word mm. different too. That's another mm. word that has too much power. Mm. Going back to our theme of words that, we focus too much on people are worried to be different but when like the the, in that sense the term different means you so instead of looking at it like i am me you're looking at it like i am different and that makes it so much more intimidating because it feels like you're the one black sheep in the herd as opposed (laughs) to like you're just you yeah and that's a celebration. We're all different. Well, I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> There's eight billion of us. I hope we're not all the right. same. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's what we how how it full circle, right? Started the conversation. How everybody has a different interpretation of the word happiness. And even before that, what you said that there is almost eight billion and we are different. The way we breathe and think and are yeah well and then if you're just being yourself doesn't that like going back to another point in the conversation and trying to you know tie it in a nice little bow here doesn't that in turn make you less afraid of death knowing that you fully expressed yourself and like just accepted who you were yeah it comes back around to the question i asked you you know so if you would have three months if you could say and i hope you um i hope you and a lot of people can really when they check in say you know what i actually had so far an amazing life if i go tomorrow if it's my time i i had yeah i did the things or i i i I lived I lived, whatever, again, this means to you, right? It's everybody, it's a different, different definition or whatever, you know, it means to you that you really felt that you were alive, that you were on, on, the, on these edges of, you know, maybe where you got um, excited and it was a little bit dangerous, whatever you did, you really went over your comfortable comfortableness your comfort zone and you really just felt that aliveness i think that's that's it that that's that's the way you know if we can say that i think then it's okay to pass Mm -hmm. because you know that you there's so many um statistics and articles about what people say these days or you know on on their deathbed and that's a lot of that is i wished i wished i would have risked more Mm -hmm. i wish i would have traveled more i wish i would have not saved that money for whatever but i wished i would have meant my relationships i wished i would have told that person i love her him 
You know, I wish I would have stepped over my shadow and my ego and my pride. And I mean, these are like powerful things. If you, if you, I mean, to me, that's so sad. If this is like your, your passing words. Yeah. So, and so that's why I think it's so important to check in with that topic and engage on that topic and, 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 and really, yeah. Just an, yeah, check in. I think that's you know to 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 check in with yourself where you're at, and then make changes and be like, hmm, maybe I do need to reach out to that person and mend that relationship. We haven't talked in four years, but it's time now. I put my ego aside because hey, it's not worth it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so many things, right? And then gives us this i think it creates space it creates freedom and that makes us more alive and then it becomes more we become more authentic and we live a better life or we you know and yeah step fully into it knowing that we're on the on, on that path of who we need to be yeah I, I wish there wasn't such a dark blanket on death because the studies that you're talking about like the people on their deathbed talking about what they wish. I, I, I wish more people heard that. I wish more people took that to heart because you, you hear them on their deathbed. They don't wish they worked harder in their job that they hate. They don't wish they, you know, made more money. They don't care about that. They're like, when they're saying they wish, they wish they built stronger relationships with the people they're with. They wish they had expressed themselves more. They wish they had lived life the way they wanted to, as opposed to on that hamster wheel we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. And even if you go to old people, like, and old, I mean, like 70, 80, 90, like people up there, mm -hmm. they don't tell you, you got to get on that hamster wheel. They like my grandparents, they're like, fuck, go travel, go get out, go see stuff. Yeah. Stop being locked in your room, man. Yeah. And we forget that so quick. Yeah. That's true. But you know, maybe we can we can um this is something we can take away from this conversation just to to think of like okay, I'm going to have this yearly check-in with myself and acknowledge that there are little deaths throughout our lives and I think with the pandemic that's definitely there's a death of of our normality, you know, we, we grieve what has been taken away or it, you know, the, our, yes, again, whatever normal life, our social life, our freedom to travel, um, you know, go to the park, the restaurants, the parties, to engage the way we used to, you know, to hug somebody spontaneously. These are all little death and we have to honor that. And then we have to, you know, then understand that there's this grief we have to go through this emotion and it's like you know sadness anger um and by acknowledging that we work through it we don't hold on to it we can put it down we can let it go and we make space for the new to come it opens us up and it also shows us that we actually love and care for something because if we if we if we grieve, that means we really miss it. That means we loved it, right? It had an importance, and so we never really think of the um, the duality of these emotions. We always think, "Oh my God, it's gone. It's sad. I'm frustrated." We're like, "Well, wait. Why are you actually frustrated? Why are you why are you sad about it?" So there's the flip side, and usually the flip side is actually a positive thing. Mm -hmm. positive emotion yeah that old that super old cheesy thing where it, it's better to have loved and lost than never to love at all <laughs> it's it's true though it is true and when you look back like oh you know I, i'm sad that that you know friendship i had's gone it's like well isn't it a good thing you're sad because then it's not such a bad memory I think if we if we looked at things like that, we'd be a lot happier. Mm -hmm. Or just 
yeah to celebrate or honor the end it comes to its end it ran its course it was beautiful as it was and now we just let it go because it also creates space for something new that's mm -hmm. the other thing the moment we are le we're not holding on to it we make space for the new to come in and we need new things why do we want to carry around this old weight that weight yeah no no point yeah no point yeah <laughs> just let go man yeah let's go i know it's so easy it's much easier said than done oh way easier said than done the word it just it seems so easy right just let go <laughs> ignore it it's gone you're like oh okay i'm suddenly happy again <laughs> it's, i wish it was that easy but you know we've mentioned tools to uh at least start that's the that's the hardest part starting Mm. Well, we start little i think we should all start little we don't have to overwhelm ourselves but you know that's we all get often carried away because we're like i'm gonna change now and i'm gonna just make this 180 and then we get overwhelmed because it's not gonna work out and then we rather go back to the old because that's easy because there's already a drag from familiarity and we're like okay maybe it didn't work i'm just not gonna do it but if we just change little by little then you know starting the process and we feel we're we're on the right trajectory we feel we achieve something mm -hmm. 100 like for instance like maybe you want to go to the gym this year and you're like i'm going to be a heavy weightlifter it's <laughs> <laughs> your goal for 2021 and this is what you manifested at on new year's and then you know get the gym membership and uh, get overwhelmed and then you drop it all together because but why not just start and be like okay i'm just gonna go and i've I do the easiest exercise there is, and I'm going to do the easiest exercise for two months because then that becomes a habit, right? A normal habit. And you don't even think about it. You just do it. And then you sort of slowly build up from that and build up from that because you don't even have to think that you're going to be this heavy weight lifter. It's just more like I am now a person who goes to the gym. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you get that habitual base. Mm -hmm. We we jump ship way too quick, but we also just dive in way too quick. Mm -hmm. We're like, because the heavy lifting part, it, that hasn't been a goal, but a goal that I've struggled with, not like in the past. Mm -hmm. I, I set these goals, these unrealistic goals for myself without worrying about what it takes to get there. And that was me in high school. That was me in university. I was like, I, I have all these goals. And I'm going to achieve them. But then the work comes mm -hmm. like the work you have to put in. And you're like, ah, oh, crap, I didn't take that into account. I thought it would be there already. Mm -hmm. And then you just give up. Yeah. I think we all do that. Yeah. But again, the more we know about ourselves and how we operate and what it takes for us to form a habit, because again, everybody's different, right? And then we can, I think the key is really just to know who we are mm -hmm. and we change all the time. So we check in with ourselves, but there's a core of how we tick, yeah. what makes us glow, what makes us cringe, things we like to do or not to do, where it takes more effort. The more we know, the, the more we can really step into that fullness of, of life. And, and hopefully live this fulfilled life. Then when that day comes, which we don't know when, that we can say, wow, what a ride. Yeah. Yeah. So, it, yeah, you just got to take the baby steps to get to self-recognition almost. And that kind of unlocks the door. Mm -hmm. Yeah trusting trusting our journey trusting the unfolding 
trusting the trust trusting even our fears just like fe just really breathing into all of what's uncomfortable befriending our dragons because we all have dragons knowing who they are mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah and then i think that's for me that's that's it and again, it's easier said than done, but that's the daily practice. Yeah. You know, if anxiety comes because whatever uncertainty is presented to us, I mean, like just breathing into the uncertainty and be like, it's fine. I, I trust it because something amazing, positive will come out of this because the moment I trust it, I change the energy into a positive thing. So everything is vibration, right? Everything is energy. So when I fight it and I I'm sitting in my fear and anxiety and it's negative, but if I can turn it around and be like, no, I trust it. It's okay. I, I allow it. It's fine. It, nothing is, it just passes through me. I don't need to hold on to it. Then everything changes. It mm-hmm. becomes acceptance and it becomes positive. Yeah. And then it becomes way less scary. Yeah. I love that. So where can my viewers find you? Um, my website and Instagram. So it's permission to bloom coaching.com. That's the website. And then Instagram is permission to bloom. It's permission underscore to underscore bloom. Awesome. I'll put those links yeah. down below. Claudia, thank you so much for joining me today. This was a lot of fun. I really appreciate it. Oh, thank you for the windy, deep exchange. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we got to do this again. I hope (laughs) because I got a lot from it. I hope the viewers uh, got a lot from it. I hope they appreciated the little psychoanalyzing. (sighs) I I was here for it. I love that. Maybe. And I really hope that we lifted the darkness to a shade of gray you know thinking about death that we took it a notch made it a little lighter and i really hope that yeah your listeners that you know check in and engage and be like hmm maybe i need to make some changes or whatever it is like i really wish that yeah yeah i hope they they look at it from a different light 100 percent. and to all my viewers i will see you guys next time Hey guys, thanks for watching another episode of my show. If you want more episodes of the H panel, the button's gonna be right here. If you wanna subscribe for more videos from myself, it'll be right down below. Please like, comment, share, give five stars. Let's keep this conversation going, guys, all right? I'll see you next time. Thank you for your support.